J. Elliot here, taking time out from doing British things like correcting people's grammar and, well, that's it really, to congratulate you, the listener, for selecting the True Blue Riffcast. Yes, you could have picked any one of the thousands of Riff Tracks themed podcasts on the web, but your perspicacity led you to seek out the number one Riff Tracks podcast, and for that, you should be commended. Now I'm going to turn you over to your hosts, Dave and Jeremy, and I shall board a flight back to England without even so much as the boxed lunch I'd been promised. Thanks, Matthew J. Elliott. This is the True Blue Riffcast, the number one Riff Tracks podcast in the world. I am Jeremy, and I am joined, of course, as always, by... Sup, everyone. I'm Dave. How's it going, Dave? What's new with you? Uh, Nothing. I had to clean up a bird corpse off my floor, like, right before the show started. That was that was fun. That was amazing. Ooh. Yeah, that's always a good time. Uh, I'm assuming yeah. it's a gift from uh, your little trash kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fanto, um, he's been hanging out in the yard a lot more because it's been, you know, thawing out a little bit. And uh, I knew it was going to happen eventually, but, like, I uh, walked out of my bedroom this morning and there was just, like, this explosion of feathers and I couldn't find the body. But he, he, he clearly brought it in from the backyard and, like, had his way with it, like, in the hallway, and it took it back out. Because, like, there, there, there's no other explanation for it, you know? And, like, you know, I don't, I don't blame him. He's a cat. He's a little murderous psychopath. Hey, doggy. Yeah, I think the male's here. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Good timing, as always. Um, hang on, just one second. I'm just going to mute for a second <laughs> until the mailman finishes walking by the house and my beagle stops going crazy. Like, this is my house. Yeah, don't don't come don't come anywhere near this house. I think he's already gone because she stopped. Kind of. You know uh, what I found? What's that? You know what I've, 
I've found out, like, just, like, you know, walking around in rural areas and walking by, like, my my neighbor's uh, houses and, like, their dogs going wild. The dogs run right up to you. You know, I found that most dogs are pussies. <laughs> like, they won't, they, they'll just bark, 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 bark. They'll run right up to you, but they won't do anything. They won't bite you. They're just, they're full of crap. <laughs> oh, my dog definitely like, is. 100%. Like, it's just like, well, come on, man. Do something. Oh, oh. You're, uh, you're, 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 you're Mr. Big Dog. I don't know where I'm going with. I'm just saying that most dogs don't, don't bite people. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, they always say, you know, their bark is worse than their bite. And I guess that's, you know. Yes. Something. I think that's a common phrase. Your common, common phrase enthusiast. The common Watch phrase Wheel enthusiast. Of Fortune. Yes. Uh, did I see, have. Did you see on, on Wheel of Fortune recently? There was like I can't remember what it was. Uh, some really common phrase. I'll have to look it up. But uh, some really common phrase, and like these, the one guy who got it kept getting bankrupt, and there's these other two idiots, who like they were saying like it out. the exact wrong word. Anyway, it. <laughs> I I saw it on I saw it on Facebook. I thought maybe you would know about it. Being that's the, funny no being, being the common phrase enthusiast you are <laughs> now i i uh i've been sick the last few days um like very very ill um it started on monday uh my wife said that i was uh basically throwing up for like six hours straight that's disgusting i wasn't paying attention to you know how long i was in the bathroom because you know i was busy but um yeah, it wasn't fun. That's and a I long like my... time. I'm in the bathroom I... for like 15 minutes, and I feel like I've been in there for five days. Like, I didn't get sick at all yesterday, and I haven't yet today. I still feel like crap. My whole body, obviously, is sore. Hey, what's up, Atomic Hero Squad? Um, and uh, it just it hasn't been fun a fun couple of days. So if I if I don't seem like I'm quite myself today. That's why. I'm still kind of feeling the effects of it. Like I said, my whole body is just like, uh. But I, I should still be able to talk all right. I mean, <laughs> my throat's fine, so that's uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's all we really need to worry about for this. First up today, before we go any further, we have to talk about the announcement, the Kickstarter announcement from Rift Tracks uh, that they made yesterday, the big announcement was, of course, Rift Tracks, the game uh, from the makers of What the Dub, which is uh, it's kind of like a Jackbox-style game uh, where you get a bunch of different uh, different clips from, from various shorts and, and features that they've done throughout the history of Rift Tracks. I know they've got stuff from Roller Gator in there, um, which just that alone yeah, like, I saw that made too. my day. Playing Nine from Outer Space, uh, a bunch of old shorts, um, Case of Spring Fever, stuff like that. All the classics. And uh, you have options. You can either write your own riffs or uh, you can pick from literally hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of, of written and voiced riffs uh, from from the people at, at Rift Tracks. And then, you know, you, you, much like the other ones, the other players judge on uh, who was the funniest. And, you know, that's how you get the points and all that fun stuff. It looks like so it's a lot like of fun. on it's it's on like a bunch of stuff, isn't it? Like on like PlayStation and Steam and Xbox and all this stuff. Yeah, it's it's gonna be on uh, Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Which is good. I would have been severely disappointed out? if it wasn't on Switch. Uh it comes out May fifth, I think it said. Mm. I know it's in May. I think it was May fifth. I'm pretty sure that's the date that they said. Uh yeah, Tom Cure Squad said it's almost like a Mad Libs game. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can see that comparison definitely. It's very close. Uh, so that's something exciting, and they did say that that's they're they've got some more things that that's going to relate to with the Kickstarter. Uh, not sure exactly what they're going to do with that. Maybe some beta tests or uh, early releases or something like that. I I don't know. Writing some riffs for the game, 
Who knows? But we have a much more interesting uh, uh, <laughs> oh, fundraising God. campaign to talk about right now. And in fact, let's switch well, over to this. Let's switch over to this in the the in the, the chat here. So, uh, James Wen. <laughs> And this is our, our normal, what the hell is James Wen doing? Uh, right now, he's doing a fundraising campaign uh, for Birdemic 3. He needs $50,000 to complete $50, post-production on Birdemic 3. Uh, I th you know, I thought he didn't know what post-production was. I don't know. He says that he wants to... Uh, he wants to have better animations, and he needs to license music and all that stuff. But here, let's just let's just let the man himself tell us. Hi, I'm James Wynn, uh, creator of Bademic, and the uh, director of the motion picture Bademic 3 CE Go. Last year in uh, 2021. I spent about nine months directing and producing Pandemic 3 CE Go. And the production of Pandemic 3 went, went uh, mostly well. Uh, Pandemic 3 has great, a great storyline. Uh, the synopsis is that uh, a flock of sea eagle attack uh, a small town called Santa Cruz, California. And uh, why did the bird attack and who will survive? And, you know, it has a, a great storyline uh, with beautiful filming location at, at uh, the Santa Cruz Beach Ball Walk, Capitola, Scott Valley, and San Juan Batista. That's where at, uh, Hitchcock filmed at the Vertigo. Um, and we have good casting with the handsome leading uh, guy uh, named uh, Ryan Lord, uh, who plays Evan. A, a gerontologist, a scientist who study aging, and the beautiful Julie Colbert, who plays a marine uh, biologist named Kim. And coming back, uh, a special appearance, we have Alan Ba, uh, who plays Rod in Pandemic One, uh, Shock and Terror. So Alan's back, uh, so it should be fun. Uh, in addition, to Pandemic 3 has uh, good music, just like the first one, uh, with new songs uh, called uh, Cosmic Beauty, sang by Damon Carter, and another new song called uh, Smile, sang by uh, Jackie Venson, written by Chris Dale. Uh, and in addition, you know, I truly believe uh, that Pandemic 3 uh, has a, a great compelling story about the harms of climate change. Uh, I believe in Benemic 3 so much that I will submit uh, Benemic 3 to the United Field Academy Award for consideration. So far, I uh, and my executive producer, Carl Daff and David Gregory, we have spent about $100,000 to uh, produce Benemic 3 CE Ego. However, uh, it's not enough. Uh, we need another fifty thousand dollar for post production. Hey, got a sec, guys. I seem to have lost Dave, and he's uh, trying to call me back. <laughs> hey, got just one second. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna pause that video, and uh, we're gonna try and get try and get Dave back here real quick. I don't know what happened, uh, or exactly. How we lost him, but Hello, what's going Dave. on? Hey, you're back. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> I just like I got a message, like why is Jeremy sending me a message and it says call ended and I was like oh well. So apparently we just we lost connection there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, resume this now for everybody. <laughs> oh, it's still let... playing. We'll let we'll let uh, James finish talking about why he needs. Uh, oh yeah, 50, about how the great how it has a great storyline. Has a great storyline. Story Written by Chris Dale. Um, and in addition, you know, I truly believe uh, that Pandemic Tree uh, has a, a great compelling story about the harms of climate change. Uh, I believe in Pandemic Tree so much that I will submit. 
Uh, but number three to the 95th Academy Award for consideration. Submitting it to the Oscars. So far, I uh, and my executive producer, Carl Daff, and David Curry. so much faith in it. We have so spent much faith. about $100,000 to uh, produce Pandemic 3 C Ego. However, uh, it's not enough. Uh, we need another $50,000 for post production uh, for uh, better realistic animation, sound design, and more music licensing. So I'm asking you uh, to help me uh, complete Pandemic 3 C Ego with your donation. That has a lot of uh, fun uh, perks with it, uh, uh, and and that uh, uh, you know I really want to release Pandemic 3 C Ego this year, uh, do the world premiere and, and the world tour. So if you help uh, 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 me complete it with your donation, it will happen. Lastly, I want to thank you for being a pandemic fan and uh, happy pandemic three, Seago. Okay, that's enough of that crap. So he he wants to thank everybody for being pandemic fans and happy pandemic three, Sea Eagle. <sighs> Eagle. All right. Now, now what he says this has jerk. some. Okay. First of all, first of all, he's showing out off how good his editing skills are in that video by keeping in all of the uh and yeah, dude, cut that out. It's easy. It's easy. I even I can do that. Come on. Uh, okay. So here's he's got all these fun perks, right, for helping. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> so many fun perks if you help, okay? Okay. Uh, you get a Birdemic 3 thank you email if you uh, if you donate $25, which one person has. Uh, you get a thank you postcard for $50. You get a poster for $100. A Blu-ray and a poster for $250. A Zoom thank you meeting DVD poster, as it says, for five hundred dollars. <laughs> Birdemic three world premiere ticket for one thousand dollars. That's it. Those are the fun parts. World premiere that you get. tickets. Where? Okay. Okay. So first off, I I think I gotta say, and I don't want to say in his defense because screw this guy. Um, <laughs> as somebody who's done these kinds of crowdfunding campaigns myself what you're trying to do is you're trying to get money like you're not trying to like sell people things uh which is what we've talked about this before but like on kickstarter and on indiegogo it's like they're, they're designed to store, like yeah. people will yeah people like treat it as as a store and so you, you have to like offer things that have nothing to do with what you're doing and it's just a colossal pain in the ass when all you're doing is just like, Hey, I just need some money to do this thing. If you could help me out. But you know, it's uh it's, it's, it's kind of a thing, but it's just like, even this, just like the, a thank you email for like, I think some of this stuff that he's doing is kind of, kind of over overpriced with that being said, like, you know, you can like, you can keep it, digital you can keep it like okay well i think what he's trying to do is like trying to like keep costs down but there are better ways to to do that you can give people incentives that are that are cheap and don't take long um but you can do it in a more practical way like like a like a postcard for 50 dollars. it's like that's not that's not worth it like if someone gives you a hundred bucks just like call him up and talk to him on Zoom for like ten minutes. You know, it's yeah. sorry. I don't sorry, know. Guys, I don't think he's gonna get very in far the, in the chat. Sorry, I have to. I got to turn the camera off for a little bit. <clears throat> what? What happened? No, oh, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just the way that I'm feeling. I, I'm feeling okay still to keep talking, but I just I need to like not be sitting up or something. <laughs> So I'm just oh, I'm dear. just getting kind of out of frame uh, with the camera, so I just got the camera turned was off. Was the chat expressing concern? No, no, no. I just 
I'm just turning the camera off. Is it that bad? It might be. It um, might get that far. What do, oh we'll wow, see. bro, that's that's awful. But um, we're gonna try and we're gonna try and force, anyway, force our way through everything here. Anyway, um, I was I was saying that this is not the first crowdfunding campaign that he's done for Birdemic Three. There's another one on Indiegogo, and I looked it up, and it says campaign closed. But I, like, I think you want this was like in 2016. I remember because it was like at the height of like our feud that he yeah. was doing this uh, other Indiegogo campaign for Birdemic Three, and you know he's shot it. He's shot like that one only raised like the it it says there it raised five hundred ninety six dollars, but I think that that was over the course of many years. Um, and yeah, I, it looks like he closed that one down and started this new one. My thing is, and I say this with all due respect, James, which isn't much, but as much respect as you <laughs> deserve from me. Okay, very little, but it's still there. Okay. What in the hell do you need fifty thousand dollars for? The movie's already done. He needs better realistic animations, as he said. Okay, he's okay, James. You're not going to get that. That's not for fifty thousand dollars. But he wants uh, to. He wants to license more music, so it's as good as it was in Birdemic One. Oh yeah, didn't he say in the because I couldn't hear the thing, but didn't he say be like, oh, the music was excellent in in Birdemic. Yes. It's a Birdemic. Birdemic. Um. So I don't know, man. I just we were talking about this before, before the show started a a couple hours ago when you sent it to me. It's the first thing I saw when I woke up. So thanks for that. You're welcome. Um, uh so uh and you said oh we have to have him on the show now and i don't know if i want him on the show <laughs> i know no, i just said this it, would be the this like, would be think... the best opportunity to actually get him on so he could sit and talk about his crowdfunding needs <laughs> and then we could you could just kind of would it how ramp, interesting would it be though i mean i i think people would come to see that just to like see if I can restrain myself. I think like oh, that's definitely. what people would, 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 would come, people would come to see that. And I don't know if I would be able to that. That's the <laughs> thing. It's just like, I was thinking about like actually talking to this dude, talking about how he gets to keep doing his thing. And he completely wrecked my other thing. And I'm still like, you know, like thinking about it still makes me angry. Like it's still like, it's still too fresh. I don't know how how much i could like refrain myself from just like not calling him a colossal piece of garbage to his face yeah it it, it might get a little it might get a little heated <laughs> yeah it 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 would be a struggle i'm just saying that i'm we can try and i will do my best but like man i could just feel just like the anger be like well david was 6 years ago i don't care <laughs> Come on, David, that happened ages ago. Get over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Get oh yeah. <laughs> anyway. He gets to make oh, he gets man. Demic three. But anyway, like I mean, we've talked about this before. We we've talked about J like like Birdemic should be like a global brand like 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 the room. And like he has like what like twenty followers on, on Twitter or like <laughs> something like that. Yeah, it's and he not has huge. Any reactions? Yeah, like like he gets no engagement except he from like He squandered it completely. Yeah, but by being a colossal asshole, and yeah, it takes it takes a lot of talent to uh, to mess yeah, something so like that up. How much do you think the reaction to Birdemic Two has? had had to do with that people were like clamoring at the height of birdemic's popularity then birdemic 2 comes out and people like don't like it um how much you think that has that like 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 the reaction to that movie and it was i know it was perceived as it was intentionally bad and people were just uh connor said he felt like an idiot for liking the first one after seeing it 
How much yeah. do you think like that I, contributed to like the downfall of the Redemic brand? I, I think I think most of it. Like at least at least a good eighty percent was was because of that. Like it, it has to be. Well, I mean we'll see. We'll but see. I I I I don't think he's gonna hit his his uh his 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 crowdfunding goal. No, um, I I don't I don't think he will. I mean, based on the last one that he did, where he got what like three hundred and twenty five dollars or whatever during his yeah so, yeah yeah during his during, campaign like, the initial run it was yeah it was real real bad. It and was, that was when I went. And that was when I registered pandemic 3com I've let that expire because I, <laughs> I, I, I don't need it anymore. Uh, well, I'm trying to let we, it go, even though how about I we stop talking haven't. about about this. This definitely, this definitely bound to be a terrible movie. And we talk about some good movies um, or some objectively yeah. good movies, I guess, with the weekend box office. Uh, the number one film again, the Batman. The Batman, uh, followed by Uncharted, uh, and then in third place we've got a special, a special thing that they did it was for BTS, some live concert thing or something was third place. Uh, then Dog, and then Spider Man No Way Home still hanging in on the top five, even though it is available on digital now for people to buy. Um, so yeah, it's still still going strong. I still haven't seen the Batman. I want to uh, kind of see it. I'll probably just wait till it shows up on HBO Max still. But yeah, no. I don't know. I don't have any interest in it, honestly. I think I think I'm 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 Batman out, honestly, for Could for be. the movies. And Could like be. this Batman movie just doesn't look appealing to me. Um and you know, I've heard that it's long, this and that, but like everyone's like, oh, it's so much dark and grittier, darker and grittier than than other. It's like, well, what in the hell was Batman in 1989? It got like a dark. Were they all saying the exact same thing in 1989? It's like, oh, this is Batman the way it should be. It's dark. Well, yeah, because they were comparing it to the old TV series, the only other mainstream, you know, uh, visual, not visual. You know, film, live action. Film, I think live action. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Live action. My brain is yeah. not here, folks. It's it's hiding somewhere else. Um. Yeah, it's still. I mean, Batman still brought in uh, sixty-six and a half million dollars. Uh, it's up to two hundred thirty-nine million right now. Which is, you know, it's hey, nowhere it's near good. Spider. Nowhere no. near Spider Man No Way Home though. No, that's uh sitting comfortably at seven hundred and ninety two million dollars. Million. Yeah, that's that's insane. It's like one of the third highest grossing movies of all time now. Maybe they should do a, a Batman movie where they bring back Michael Keaton. No, that's Flash. Uh, who are they? That's the Flash yeah, movie. Yeah, I know, but that that got delayed. Yeah, but... They made this big deal. About uh, 2022 is going to be the year of DC, and they put out this special trailer with all these movies. It was the Batman and Flashpoint and Aquaman 2, and there was something else, and I don't even remember what it was. Oh, Black Adam. And uh, all of those movies, you know, Black Adam, uh, notwithstanding, because that one is still supposed to come out later this year. Uh, but the Flash movie uh, has officially turned into DC's New Mutants. Uh, because it keeps getting delayed and pushed back and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And, delayed. and that's the one that, that's, I have that... Su- what? I was about to say, does it have the chick from the Queen's Gambit in it? <laughs> I have no was idea. That... Yeah, I think she was in that. Um, Her name but that's the one that's supposed to be giving us something? back, um, Michael Keaton as Batman or as a version of Batman. Hmm. I, I don't know. If they follow the comics, I mean, it'll be you, Thomas Wayne, but uh, Thomas Wayne, yeah. No, I have the comics. I'm I have some comic book cred myself, even though I haven't set foot in a comic book store in two and a half years because the comics are terrible now. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, it's um it's Thomas Wayne. You want spoilers, the flash breaks time. 
Yeah. And uh, it was Tom, it was Bruce and his mom that got killed, and then Thomas Wayne is like, I'm gonna be a green Batman guy now. <laughs> Except he actually kill murked people. people, yeah. He yeah. actually unalived a lot of people. Um, people yeah. yeah. So I don't know. We'll we'll see if those ever actually that flash movie ever actually even gets released. <laughs> It'll be interesting. But um if you want to talk about Batman's showing up like um you know that movie um Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness blah 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 yeah and how it's supposed to be the people are touting it as like uh they're trying to sell it as it's going to be just as crazy as Spider-Man No Way Home There's so many cameos well, that was actually and I guess... Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch said that himself too right but um, so they're they're trying to hype it up like that, and um, I went and I did a Google search, and there's a major spoiler on the IMDb page. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, but I'm gonna look right now. Go to IMDb.com. I could not believe it's right there because I did a Google search first, and it came up in the cast. It's like number three. And I was like, that's huge. Oh, yeah. No, he uh he did he did say in an interview that he was that that was indeed him. Oh who? Oh 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 are we are we being uh, are we gonna let our audience in on what we're talking about? Uh yeah. Go ahead. Okay, sure. Okay, so spoilers for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, Google IMDb and pa- I guess Patrick Stewart himself is like, yeah, no, I'm in that. I'm Charles Xavier. Yeah. Screw you. He said uh, in an interview, uh, he didn't see the commercial uh, or he didn't watch the trailer because yeah. it was on during the Super Bowl and he had his phone off. And when he woke up the next morning, he turned his phone on and he started getting all these messages. And then he got a, a message from his uh, publicist and he watched, he said he watched the trailer. And he's like, I almost didn't even recognize my own voice. And then people, all they saw was like my earlobe and my shoulder, and they went crazy. So that was that was that's him not, basically yeah. confirming that that was that he's in the movie. Um, that, that at least as a version yeah, of but, that character. Yeah, because like because that person, like you know, if you know, he's he's dead and buried in the middle of wherever the hell, North Dakota. Well, he's died. Wherever. He's died twice now. So. So you think he's gonna? Do you think they're gonna pull a hat trick? Do you think they're gonna have him die? Yes. Patrick Stewart dies as, as Professor X die a third time. Yes, I, I. That's my. I honestly, I hope it happens. Just because I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> if he, uh, uh, if he somehow but yeah, died so, like, again. But now I'm just like. But now I'm just like, well, here, 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 here's what I want. From Doctor Strange. This is the cameo I want, and if I don't get it, it's just like that movie is terrible, and there's <laughs> nothing you can do to uh, make me think otherwise. Unless they have Henry Cavill as Superman, uh, Ben Affleck as Batman, and Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman show up in this movie. Okay, I'm not going to be impressed. All right, <laughs> like like that is the only thing that will satisfy me. Going go. Going into this movie, is if not those even, three show up as not as even those Tom characters. Cruise as as variant Iron Man. As, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me Robert Nobody Downey Jr. You know, like my position is to be like, oh, who could they get to play Wolverine in the MCU? But like, I know who, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> That's sure. Why about. not? Why not? At this point, why not? Like honestly, all bets are off. Death all bets doesn't mean off. anything. No, death, death. It's comic books. Death never means anything in comic books, ever. Especially in comic book movies. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh man! All right, let's move on from the current box oh, yeah. office. And before we start talking about our two movies today, yes, we're talking about two movies. We're talking about which we didn't drop this at all at the beginning. Uh. We're going to be talking about the Max Havoc duology, uh, Curse of the Dragon and Ring of Fire, which is the newest Rift Tracks release. Before we get into that, I did promise that I was going to show you guys uh, the uh, the weird CG stuff that they did for uh, the uh, 
DVD release of Rift Track Shorts Volume 1. Where did I put the case? I got the case right here so I can look at it. It's the best of Rift Track Shorts Volume 1, and it has uh, Shake Hands with Danger. This was the first time that that was released from them, and it was a special oh, wow, wow, 3D wow. animated version, and it does have a little intro to it. Um, so I'm just going to play the intro to this right now so you can see. I can't see, see it, everybody, so... How you're not you're not at your computer anymore? I am at my computer, but I'm not going to be able to see. Um, well, here, let me bring up the actual thing here. Yeah, geez. I'll have to look at it on your uh, Twitch page. Yeah, well, I just have it. I just have it on on the pause screen right now. So, Whew. and whatever that was oh, a minute no. ago, huh? Hey, uh, go ahead and play. That because uh, my cat decided he just wanted to jump behind the washer and dryer. I got to go rescue him. <laughs> so okay. uh, I'll be. I'm going to play this, folks, uh, for you. So here we go. Here's the weird CG animated thing that they tried out for this. It takes a second because it's got to spin up because it's on DVD. Alarm. Huh? Alarm. Huh? Alarm. Summon uh -oh. rippers. Okay. Great right. avatars right. now. Just... Okay, yeah, let's go. Hey, Mike. Warning, two rippers not isolated. What? Oh, no! Error, error. Uh -oh. Huh? What the? Ah, disembodio! <laughs> well, better get rid of We don't make movies, we make them funny. So there's that, uh, Dave's, Dave's calling back again. Hang on one second. Uh, yep. I can't find the window. I got so, too many windows open. Except. Huh. <laughs> Welcome back, Dave. Just in time. <laughs> okay, so I was, I'm I'm on the phone now, so we won't get interrupted again. <laughs> okay. Did you get your cat? So uh, I don't know. Rescued. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He he decided he wanted to jump behind the washing machine because he's so interested in what's going on back there. Like I'll be like, no, Fanto, you can't get back there. He did this yesterday, <laughs> and I thought he back there. And no. I had to go like run and rescue him. Like, no, he 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 doesn't realize that. Like, he he doesn't realize that um, if he gets back there and I'm not around to like move the washing machine out of the way so we can get out, he's gonna be trapped back there because both times he's done it now is like I've been there to go rescue him. I can't get so out. one one of these days. There's like no way for him to get out of there unless I'm around. So, you know, jerk. Well, here's uh, here's here's a still of uh, the Kevin Murphy popcorn abomination. Uh, and we'll jump back over there. We'll get Bills back up here in a second. Uh, let's let's get back to Mike here. Mike was the the first one that they. That they brought in, and he's just in an avatar of Mike Nelson, uh, done in CG. Uh, so there's Mike, which you know look, looks mostly like Mike. And uh, let's see, Kevin was right around here somewhere. As you can see, they kind of did this like transporter accident combination type thing. Uh, because Kevin's got a bag of popcorn on his lap, and Bill, for whatever reason, is playing with an inflatable parrot. Uh, and they get combined on their way into this little virtual reality thing. And so here's Kevin again uh, with this weird... That just looks so bizarre. Uh, Bill looks even worse. Like, I don't... <laughs> it's 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 horrifying. It's quite horrifying, actually. Uh, and let's see. I think there's like a little bit of a group shot. There we go. There's all three of them. Kevin also uh, has popcorn hands. 
popcorn so, hands. Yeah, those hands are popcorn. As you can as you can tell in this uh let me take another snapshot of this. I'm gonna save it for later. So, uh yeah, as you can see in this uh this screen here. Uh, and the whole the whole riff, let's see, it's kind of uh I don't know, MST three K ish. You know, the fact that you see that shows them from behind as they're sitting there watching this riff. They're spread out a little differently. Uh, Mike's down in the right-hand corner. Kevin and Bill are in the left, and they're not silhouettes. You can actually see their whole character. Uh, it's just kind of a weird... I don't... I don't know. I don't understand why they did it. I have no yeah. idea. I have no idea what... What the thought process was, I, they were probably just testing it out to see what the reaction would be, and uh, I'm just assuming the, the fact that they never did another one like that again, uh, it probably wasn't amazing. <laughs> so, no, yeah, it's like um, it's it 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 kind of reminds me of uh, there were these couple of like shorts or like short compilations of like clips from movies. In like 2013, oh, you're talking like called... the the villains. Yeah, villains, and there was something else. It was like and 90s they... cyber or something. Yeah, yeah, 90s cyber, and another one was villains, and they had like these um, they were like little short clips, and they're like, uh, I remember Sean or Connor was saying at the time is that these uh, were charging more for these because they were a lot more work. And the reaction to them was just like universally, just like we don't want this. <laughs> yeah, we want the we want so, the movies that these clips are yeah. from, not just yeah, the clip. Like, yeah, don't just yeah yeah don't just do movie clips. Like, what is this? And um, it kind of reminds me like like that's what this reminds me of. Like, I think they kind of probably got like feedback like that. It's like, yeah, this didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was you know they got to try out some stuff, and not everything's gonna land. That's that's basically yeah. what it boils down to. Um, but yeah, that's there you go. I I told you guys I'd show that to you, and 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 there it is. I actually remembered. <laughs> go figure. Uh, but now we're gonna move on to the uh to the meat of this podcast today, and we're going to be talking about the two Max Havoc films, Curse of the Dragon. And the latest Riff Tracks release, uh, Max Havoc, Ring of Fire. Yep. Max uh, Havoc, the duology. Yes. Uh, now, the first one came out last year. Uh, yes. We got that uh, July 9th Ju- of July. last year. And uh, that movie has a few people that, that you might recognize. Uh Namely, uh, one David Carradine. Yes, he's um, he's very much he functions like the Joe Estevez and Roller Gator in in, in Max <laughs> Havoc one. Yes, yeah. Uh, um, except there's a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. He's a little more involved in the character's history. Um, at, at least, at least a little bit. But there, there's something interesting that I saw about this movie. Uh, it it takes place in in Guam. Yes, it, it was takes filmed place primarily in Guam. in Guam. Yeah. Uh it premiered in Guam. Uh, it premiered in Guam in 2005. Yeah. Uh, and then it came out on DVD in 2007. This was a straight to DVD thing. Um, but it it got a lot of uh, press because of the lawsuits. Yes. Regarding its uh, financing. So- <laughs> so yeah, so the Guam Chamber of Commerce basically funded this movie and loaned the production like eight hundred thousand dollars. Um, something went down, or like some obligations weren't fulfilled, and so um, there was all kinds of like it was it was this big story in Guam. And if you go and if you watch the movie, it's basically like a tourism. Uh, kind it's like of copper like copper mountain for guam yeah yeah it's exactly that it's very it's very like pro guam come here and like ride our jet skis <laughs> it's like we have 
jet skis everywhere all the time. Yeah, rent you can a jet take ski. them and they're free. But um, it like dragged on for like years, and I think it only got uh, settled in 2012. Yeah, something like that. Uh, it it wasn't really a long time ago. It was uh, six years. There was in six years of litigation. Uh, and it finally got settled in uh, a settlement was reached May 11th, 2012. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. It was only a decade ago. But. Um... And the movie that they got back, uh, according to the uh, the Chamber of Commerce administrator, uh, he's, they asked them if the money would be used uh, as like a windfall and if it would be used for future economic development projects on Guam, they stated that the money would barely pay for the legal fees incurred during the six years of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and in September uh, of that year, the uh, the company that made the movie declared bankruptcy. And uh, wow. in October, let's see, October 26th of that year, uh, the... Commerce Board met, established that they had made a partial late payment of $75,000 with $150,000 still outstanding. A new deadline was set for January 31st of 2013. He missed the deadline, uh, but they in February they received the rest of the money and finally closed the lawsuit. <laughs> over, over that stupid movie. Over Max Havoc and the Curse of the Dragon. <laughs> Now, like, uh, okay, so the like the, the the movie itself, Max Havoc One, um, it's it's kind of hard to follow. There's like this uh, skimpy bikini girl who does some shady like double dealing so that her other skimpy girl skimpy girl sister can go to medical school, and Max Havoc is there. And there's a dragon thing. There's a gang led by David Carradine who's trying to find the dragon thing. And it's just craziness. Uh, and then um, David Carradine at the end comes out and be like, Haha, you remember me? I was at, I was managing the guy that you killed in the ring. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, Max Havoc is this Swedish kickboxer man. Um, yeah, ex, ex kicks boxer. Yeah, so like uh, in 1996, who was a sports Tokyo? photographer in hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a he's a, he's a sports photographer now, but uh, and he travels to exotic locations to take pictures of people, um, which we'll get into in Mac ha Max Havoc too. <laughs> but um, he's in this sunny paradise to do some photographing of like water sports there on the beach and, and this and that. And he gets involved in all this, but in 1996, he was a kickboxer man yep. and he killed a man in the ring in a title fight, just like <laughs> rrr, just boom, just like snapped his neck and, and killed him. And that uh, uh, David Carradine was the manager of the guy that he killed. Yeah. Uh, so it all like it's it it's basic, you know, nonsense. And I think what's most notable about M Max Havoc One is just like how much non acting there is in it. Like the Swedish kickboxer man who plays Max Havoc. He's like a smartened up, evolved version of of, of Rod from Birdemic, <laughs> and they even make an a, a reference to it because um, Blonde Lady and Max Havoc are strolling through like downtown Guam, looking at at shops, and I think it's Kevin that says, "What is this? Rod and Natalie go shopping? Like in in Guam, they go on vacation. What are we seeing here?" Um, but the um, the uh, 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 the the look is very like two thousands blondes on the beach kind of just like very sanitized very PG thirteen kind of like you know it's 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 very very beachy and it's very of its time yeah uh, so and it's 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 bright it's colorful 
and it has um you know it's it generally has like very happy relaxed beach vibes this whole movie does yeah it it's it definitely has that to it um in part uh yeah. what what was it that you that you said about this uh last night when you were watching it Oh, I said uh, that like like between the acting and like the non plot points and like the kinds of actors that they have, it was like it was really like 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 it like the the script really did feel like someone like Tommy Wiseau or James Wen had written it, and the beach vibes and just like the beautiful people kind of reminded me of dancing, dancing it's on. And then there was the the other aspect of it where a uh, Swedish kickboxer man is a Swedish kickboxer man. <laughs> yeah. So I said this was like if somehow the room birdemic, uh, dancing, it's on, and no retreat, no surrender, no retreat, no surrender, all somehow had a baby together. And it was like had high production values. And this is what they got. And they're able to get David Carradine as, as the slow clapping villain. Yeah. The 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 big bad. Yeah. Who's behind everything? The grandmaster of uh, yeah. the black dragons. Oh, and spoilers! He ends up like at the end, like there, like uh, uh, Max Havoc and uh, um, Chief Henchman Man have a you know a. a big showdown in the warehouse and they have a one-on-one fight and David Carradine's like, Hmm, I respect you. I, I give up all mm-hmm. the things I was trying to do because you've won my respect by beating my henchman. And yeah. he goes up to the henchman and he's like, Oh, you've disappointed. You've brought dishonor to me or something. And be like, you know what to do? He hands him a knife and the guy just kills himself. <laughs> <It's> like <this. laughs> Now. Yeah. It's oh my gosh. He won the fight. Uh, he turned over. Uh, the urn and received a priceless katana as a gift. Oh right! Oh right! Okay, so that—that's another thing. Like that, um, you know how I said the the uh, Blondie McSnicker pants was doing uh like shady deals to put her her um her sister her kid sister yeah through medical school even the though like, oh, sisters yeah it's like oh right that woman is gonna be a doctor mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so this, 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 this dragon was stolen. This dragon statue was stolen and it was taken to like this sort of pawn shop antique thing and sold for like four <laughs> yeah. grand. Okay. And then, uh, Blondie McSnickerpants comes in, buys it for 5,000 thinking that she can like sell it for more. Um, and she goes to like some antique expert who says it's worth like a million dollars and everyone tries to get it back and it gets lost somewhere and like, Oh no, it's worthless now. And yeah. David at the end, David Carradine gives them this katana sword and, um, Dr. McSnicker pants <laughs> goes and has the katana sword sword appraised and it's worth like even more than the dragon statue which makes zero sense yeah it's like it's from like the some dynasty in china or something be like someone's gonna pay a lot of money for this like like right sure it's like, probably made so, by the same guy who made the sword and kill bill yeah so he was just like uh and so they're like oh that's so great and so they went to go like do and they do the whoop whoop dance with the <laughs> katana sword it's like maybe you want to put that down it's worth yeah. so much money. Uh, and then uh, uh, Max and uh, Jane, uh, they they embrace on the they beach. Embra- yeah. Which even which we find out uh, two years later in the in the next movie that it didn't didn't last. I guess it didn't last. Okay, now is she brought up in? I I, I guess talking about Max Havoc too. Which place takes place in garbage garbage can on fire burning Seattle? <laughs> yeah, and these two movies are so tonally different that like like 100%. in like location, yeah, in like location and theme and like all this. If like 
Max Havoc and the uh, Curse of the Dragon was like happy fun time jet ski in Guam beach stupid girls uh, going to become doctors and 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 things like that and girls in bikinis but like not like you know gross porno bikinis or anything but uh like you know like very clean modest kind of like f- fun kind of things <laughs> like you know like 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 a bikini but a, a but a bikini you would wear when your mom was around you know that kind of thing um so i'm 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 wondering at what point did like cuz is she even mentioned no no the only so, the only thing that's mentioned from the first movie in the second movie is the fact that he killed a dude in the ring and they I think they elaborate on it a little bit more in here when he finally oh. decides to talk about it after he bangs after the tennis he, chick. After he has sex um, with the tennis champion. Uh, she Because he's having, like, night terrors about it. And uh, she wakes him up, and he's like, oh, yeah, I killed a guy in the ring. And he was like, at that point, I had already won on technical points, but I still wanted to prove something, and that's when he killed him. Yeah. So it's like, like yeah, oh, so he already knew he won the match. He just wanted to humiliate the guy, and then he ended up. Uh, he yeah. ended up being a murderer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then in this one, the bad guy is uh, bleach blonde Dean Kane, who uh, everybody loves in this day and age, and uh, he's he runs a hotel, and he's trying to buy out like a whole city block, uh, and people aren't aren't selling so he just starts burning down their businesses and stuff uh and he's got the the cops in his pocket and this is this is interesting because uh the main police officer he has in his back pocket is martin cove who's better known as uh john crease from the karate kid he was uh the master of the uh yeah cobra kai uh who was in a movie in 1975, with David Carradine, uh, Death Race uh, 2000. I just thought that was yeah. an interesting little. Uh, wasn't that directed by what's his name? Connection. What Death Race 2000? Yeah, wasn't that directed by um uh uh, uh, uh Harvey? So, no, not Harvey Corman. <laughs> it was Paul Bartel. No wait. Uh, what's the name of the guy who directed Little Shop of Horrors? Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. It's Schlockmaster. He's done lots of really bad things. The the original Little Shop of Horrors? Yes. Or the second one? No, the, the uh, first one. The original... The one that the Rift Tracks did. Why won't you come up? I know this uh, guy's name. Like, I'm going to feel stupid. Yeah. We're... Here we go, folks. This is our uh, standstill portion. Oh, Roger yeah. Corman. Duh. Yeah, Roger Corman. Yeah. His name was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, I thought Roger Corman directed Death Race 2000. Uh, I thought he did, too. Uh, he did uh, the newer ones. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking right now trying to find... What was that, 75? Is that what I said it was? Yeah, for Death Race 2000. He was a producer. Oh. I knew he was involved with that movie in somehow. In somehow, yes. Uh, me but anyway, Max today. Havoc. Uh, Max Havoc, Ring of Fire, yeah. So he's uh, a photographer for the sports magazine, which is why he's there in the first place, because he's taking pictures of... Uh, this tennis champion in Seattle for some reason. And uh, he ends up, as soon as he shows up, his his case with all of his camera equipment gets stolen by this kid. By this uh, little by this little discount short round. <laughs> who we find out is an orphan. He's an orpan. He's an orpan. And, uh, you know, he uh, he runs off with it. Max follows him. And he loses him when the kid jumps in the back of a truck or something. <laughs> and uh, he's trying to track him down, and he, he finds out, oh, yeah, he's from this orphanage over here. And he goes and gets his stuff back and then uh, teaches the kid 
uh, like the stuff you do before your fight when you do Mai Tai because it's respectful and uh, if it shows what school you went to and if other people are from the same school they refuse to fight you because you're family I it was just kind of weird I mean, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying that that's not a, an actual thing that they do but but just, we are it saying that it's stupid. It's rather uh, odd. <laughs> um, it was, but, the uh, way that it was presented in the movie was stupid, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, I do got to say that between one and two, uh, Swedish kickboxer man, Max Havoc, I guess his name is. It's, it's only the name of the movie. Uh, <laughs> Max Havoc, in the first movie, his accent wasn't that thick. No, it was worse in the second one. Yeah, it was way worse. Like I think, like the like, it, it he got some direction to like dial it back in the first one, and in this one, this like they didn't care, like at all. Is is his accent is super thick? Yeah, but I do got to ask a question. So he's in there in Seattle, and this tennis champion lady to to okay. I got to ask who travels to Seattle to get their uh, pictures taken. And how long does that take? Because it seems like it's taking a long time in this movie. It it really here's, here's the thing about this movie, right? Uh, And, and, and the first one, the first one also, Uh, when you watch this movie, you kind of, it has it has the Octoman effect, okay? Where within the first 20 minutes of this film, uh, Max finds the kid who stole his camera stuff, and he goes to the orphanage. And while he's there, he learns from Tommy Chong's daughter that um, there's a Is that Tommy Chong's gang. daughter? Yes, it is actually. They make a joke about it, but it is actually Tommy Chong's daughter. Oh, wow. Um, they, they he find out that there's this gang going around, and they're... Uh, frightening off the uh, frightening off the old established shopkeepers that the guy wants their their property, um, and the kid who stole his stuff, his parents actually died in a fire set by that street gang, um, but that's why he's at the orphanage. Uh, the street gang shows up and he he fights them off a little bit, and I'm like, wow, that felt like a really long time and I looked down and 20 minutes had passed yeah. <laughs> and I was like how is there still 58 minutes left in this movie like it didn't seem like it didn't seem like that was right yeah these movies have a tendency to drag um... but it's not it's not the, the riff's fault at all like I was entertained Pretty much oh, the whole no. thing on both of these. On both of these, they were outstanding. But, um, yeah, it's just there's I don't know. There's something about there's just something about these movies and how dumb they are. I I will say also, uh, the fact that these movies both end so similarly. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. They and I'll, have, and I'll, a... I'll tell you what I I'll tell you what I mean by that. In the first one, when he's fighting the the guys like main henchman, yeah. uh he. He gets him all beat up, and he's sitting there, and if Max hits him again, he'll kill him. The same way he killed the guy in the ring uh, that, that made him retire from you know from kickboxing. Uh, and he, he stops himself short from doing it. In the end of this one, when he's fighting Dean Cain, uh, who, by the way, at this point, has shot two children. Yep. Um, he, it's the exact same thing. He's down... He's got his fist back. Max is ready to punch him, and, and he realizes if he hits him, he'll kill him, and he doesn't. And and then he embraces the girl. Uh, like It's almost the exact same ending. Uh, okay, can I say something about uh, like about the ending and the girl, yeah. the kid specifically? And this goes back to shooting children. So in the climax, uh, Dean Cain shoots the kid in the shoulder. And... Um, uh, this actress who I recognize her. Apparently she was killed by, she was killed by, um, um, Michael C. Hall in an episode of Dexter. Um, like, and like, that's where I knew her from. (laughs) She was on, she was on Dexter's, uh, uh, kill table at some, at one point. 
Um, but uh, for some reason, I kept getting like, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so he shoots the kid and the lady says, I have to get him to a hospital. I'm like, OK, go take him to a hospital. And so um, uh, Max Havoc and Dean Cain fight. And Dean Cain, uh, like, like, so they have a big fight, and they like burst out the back into like this little like backyard kind of area place. And the lady brings the kid back to like watch the last part of yeah. the of the of the fight. I was like, why is she bringing that kid back here? Like, she never left like, with him in the first place. Yeah, she never left. I thought you were supposed to go leave him to take him to a hospital. Like, what? But. Yeah, it uh, it was very weird. Poor that, staging. But that wasn't the that wasn't the worst thing that happens in Max Havoc Ring of Fire. The 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 worst scene, the dumbest scene. Okay, uh, oh, the, okay Max yeah. confronts about this. the gang member uh, again, and they're at the same the same area where the final fight takes place. But this is you know like a half hour in the movie before that, uh, and there's like a a barrel or something with a bunch of cans of kerosene sitting on top of it. And the kid pulls out a shotgun and aims it Mm -hmm. at Max. And as the guy shoots the shotgun, Max kicks a can of kerosene up to block the shot, only to have it explode directly in front of him. Right in his face. Right in his face. And, like, burned his arm up. Like, what the hell? What? It was... It was so dumb. One of the dumbest things I've seen in an action movie. And and let's be, let's be real here. These movies are at least this one is an action movie only in the the weakest most milk toast sense of the of the word. It's very just boring <laughs> as as an action movie. And you can 100% tell that both of these movies were direct to DVD features cuz they had that like Dave said that that early 2000s feel to them. They, yeah. Both in different ways, but they both had that, that feel to them. Um, so let's let's go through real quick, at least for Ring of Fire, and let's run down our, our 10 points here. Because uh, I, I think we could probably, you know, put them both, rank them both pretty much the same. Yeah, overall. yeah, yeah. Let's rank them as one. Let's rank them as a double feature. Yeah, let's do Okay, so we start with plot. There there was actually ah. somewhat of a story in these that that you could kind of follow. It wasn't a great story, but there was something there. Uh you know, this this is and I, and I mentioned this to Dave that this is a nice refresher after uh movies like winter beast and things yeah no here, here, here's the not. thing it's like these <laughs> movies are competently shot like like it, it's not like this ugly hellscape nightmare yeah that it's just like that's just like murder on your eyeballs i think i think so, i'm gonna give i think uh i'm gonna to look ahead here and i'm gonna give these uh i'm gonna give them a uh a two and a half on cinematography uh, because it's not it's not amazing by any standards, but it's like you said, it's competent. Yeah. Uh, plot wise, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go two overall between the two of them. Yeah. I think I'm gonna give it a two. Uh, acting. Oh, I mean, David Carradine knows how to chew any scene that he's in. Uh. And then you got to kind of even that out with uh, with Dean Cain <laughs> on the on uh, the other side of things. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to give this one a two and a half. Also, this is a very middling movie. It's 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 better than most, but not as good as a lot. <laughs> if that makes any sense, which I know it doesn't. Uh, dialogue. I'm giving a uh, one big and a fat half. zero. Yeah. Overall, cinematography two and a half. Uh, editing. Dude, well, no, I think give the cinematography. I mean, like, if as far as I don't know, I think I'd give it a four, just oh, based on what we've been looking at for the last ye- for the last for the last past couple of, couple of months. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I give it a four. All That's right, just yeah, me, though. Comparatively, it is it is pretty good, and I always will defer to the higher 
uh, the higher choice here. Uh, editing? Well, it was competent. I mean, it wasn't bad. Well, uh, no, there is something very strange happening, at least in the early parts of, of the second movie, is that they do this weird fade out, and then they come back in like they went to break. Like it was <laughs> made for back. TV. Yeah, yeah, it was a very much, and we're back. Maybe it was originally going to be a made-for-TV thing. Uh, I'm going to give it a two for editing. Effects, there aren't really no, much there weren't to really speak effects, of. There yeah. was some fire in the second one. Um, the, the one dude, the kid getting killed, I mean, <laughs> it worked. It, it looked passable as what it was. Uh, I'm just since the fact that there wasn't a whole lot of special effects, I'm just going to give it a perfect score down the middle. It's going to be two and a half. Uh, sound and music. Was there anything that stood out to you as far as like the music well, I mean, in this movie? They did sing on the beach at the end of the first one, but it was super cringe. Just like, oh, I know what year this was filmed. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I. I Nothing bad, nothing like outstanding either. Like I didn't even notice it. There wasn't anything that like made you go, "Oh God, what is this music?" No, 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 no. There is no, uh, there is no um, guitar noodling. Yeah, there's nothing that stands out, good or bad. So we're gonna go right two point five again, just right down the middle. Uh, directing each film was directed by a different person, uh, but I that makes they, a lot of sense. Yeah. Because you could tell from from the the difference in tone between the two, like yeah, one is just like this very flirty kind of like, kind of like something you would watch with your with your dumb blonde girlfriend in the year two thousand five. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. What? I mean, am I wrong? No, not at all. Uh, again, uh, though, it's and... it's it's passable. I mean, the directing was. Somebody competent knew at least mostly what they were doing when it comes to both of these movies. They yeah, there were there so. were people that that knew what they were doing for the most part, and and that that kind of brings it up a little bit on its own. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a three, I think. Okay, so uh, character and personality. Character and personality. I think I think these movies had. A lot of personality, honestly. Like, I don't know. It's just like as much as I complained about it, I was actually kind of charmed by it. I mean, probably mm-hmm. because we just, probably because we just watched things in Copper Mountain. So, <laughs> well, that's like, the thing too. Is like I know you were worried about this movie because, uh, you know, we've been we've been talking a lot lately about uh, about the, the MP3s and why we miss them so much. Yeah, uh, and how we've been no, just no. getting a lot of the same type of middling, you know, B movies, and they're just like kind stuff of that like really doesn't and... hold your attention. Yeah, yeah, and I know you were expecting to get that from these. Yeah, so but like, yeah, I mean, that's what I assumed. I mean, how could you? How could you not assume that going into something like something 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 named Max Havoc? I mean, <laughs> yeah. This Dude, doesn't I was seem back, like it's going to be anything else. I was looking back at like uh, uh, like the riffs they've been doing for like I would say in like 2020 and 2021. I don't remember watching like half of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and I know we did like the yeah the minion. I know I watched it. I, I don't remember, remember a whole about lot it. about it. Dolph Lundgren's in it. It's about, it's like Ninja War, like 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 they keep referencing Ninja Warlord. Ninja Warlord. Did I yeah. see that one? We watched it. It was about the weird fishing, like dispute over fishing or whatever. I don't remember I don't, it at all. No, I don't remember that one very much. Well, I mean, uh, I think that kind of gets to the point where, where where we're at in the history of Rift Tracks, in that um, they've just done so much. That it's that it's almost impossible to retain all of it. Yeah. Like uh, like gonna, like. I think I'm gonna go three and a half on this for personality. Yeah, I um, I thought this had personality, especially when you compare it to things like Things and Copper Mountain. Um, 
So yeah, it was a refreshing change of pace. Yes, it was a, it was a as we say, it was a nice refresher uh, in between the stuff that's so ridiculously insane uh, that you have a hard time even understanding what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, insane and poorly done like things that we still can't figure out why that's or how mm-hmm. that achieved any any sort of cult status whatsoever. Like things. Like I don't know why this movie. It's just a couple of doofuses doing this in their in their in their in their grandpa's basement while their <laughs> seven hundred pound uncle is upstairs watching washing his skin flaps. That's what that movie felt like. Well, uh, that's a visual I didn't need, Dave. <laughs> hey, if I had to watch it on Doctor Mike, you got to hear about it. So. <laughs> uh, all right, and then of course our final category is the riffs. The riffs are great. I mean, like, I mean, I know we say that all the time, but I was laughing quite a bit. Like, I really as, enjoyed these riffs. I might. As was I, I'm probably. I'm probably going to watch these again. And I know uh, one of your favorite parts was uh, a certain callback at the end of the first oh, Max Havoc right. movie. They're, yeah, they um, – oh, I'm trying to remember which – oh, yeah, they did a – um. Uh, uh, it was when they brought the katana sword out. It was when Dr. McSnickerpants brought out the – and she called it a kendo sword, and Bill said <laughs> – uh, it's a, if you should know that a kendo, a kendo sword is a training stick. And I was like, yes, that's a reference to prisoners of the lost planet 2012, a decade ago. And like long, the ancients of the ancients like me are the only ones that get it. And I yep. just, so I was, just, I heard that and I was like, and I thought of prisoners of the lost planet. <laughs> and when I thought of it, that's like, like a second later is when Bill said that. And I was like, Yes. I was Beautiful. so happy. Uh, and I think I'm going to give it, uh, I think I'm going to give four and a half for that. Yeah, I'm going to give, I, I, I don't know if I'd give it five, but definitely four and a half. Um, I would, I'm probably definitely going to watch these again, which uh, given my negative attitude about certain movie selections <laughs> lately is saying something like, yeah, like I might want to watch this. I might want to watch these again. It I actually says I a enjoyed lot. these. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, I enjoyed these because, like, I, I I've been Mister Jaded here recently, but these were really good. Yeah, they're both very enjoyable, and again, it was kind of a surprise as to how much I enjoyed them. I wasn't them. expecting very much. I was expecting no. very much from either of these movies. No. Uh, uh, so, so good job, guys. But that that yeah. gives us a total score of twenty eight out of fifty. So that's, so that's like what a. That's, you know, that's, what, just over 50%. So way better than things got. So I is think things got like eight discount? points or something. Yeah. Yeah, things are terrible. Things are bad. Things things was not good at all. Not good at all. So that brings us, of course, to our question, Dave. Yeah. Would I watch these movies on Would you watch either of these Unrift. I don't think so, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the riffs themselves. I don't think I would watch these Unrift um, because they're just so stupid. Um, but uh, with riff tracks, hell yeah, this is what riff tracks is for. Like, 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 like th- this felt like classic riff tracks to me. Yeah, I think if I would have seen this come on. TV like on a Saturday afternoon where I had nothing else to do. I probably would have watched it, one of them. Just... I don't know if it would have held my attention. No, I day, would have turned but, it on yeah. though. I definitely would have turned it on. So yeah, they're both pleasant pleasant surprise from the Max Havoc duology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed these movies. I enjoyed these riffs, I should say, quite a bit. Yes, me too. Uh, next week, uh, if we do not uh, get a, a new release this this Friday, uh, we will go back to uh, Yam Bao. We'll be doing Yam Bao, Bao. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was our, our backup plan for this week, just in case we didn't get anything new. 
Um, so it's either going to be Yambao or a new release. We'll find yeah, out. Really? We'll find out. We shall week. see. Yeah. Uh, until then, guys, if you like the podcast and you want to support us, you can obviously subscribe right here on Twitch, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash trueblueriffcast, and you can support us for a couple dollars a month over there. Uh, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at tbriffcast. And you can follow me on Twitter at PB and Awesome. Uh, and I'm Dave Chadwick. You can check me out at DaveChadwick.info, where we actually have pre-orders available Woo. for the audiobook for Monkey, a novel read by, narrated by um, ICW XP and Robot Co-op creator Rick Wolf. Rick Wolf. You go to yeah, you go to uh, DaveChadwick.info, and it's right there. There's a little YouTube video. Click on that, and it gives you a little preview of him narrating a little section of the book and right below it. Um, you can pre-order it for 30 bucks. Uh, we're, you know, uh, the book's still in production. We're aiming for a December. Like, that's what we're saying. We're saying that the estimate, we're giving ourselves enough time, but it's probably going to be a lot sooner than that. Yeah. But definitely before December of this year, the book will be done. And uh, we will ship you, we'll send you a DRM free. Uh, we're going to put your info into a, on, onto a list. And when we're done with production, we'll send you a DRM free copy of the audiobook um, before we put it on Audible or any of those other places. So, yeah, that's what the pre order gets you. Is it gets you that. And you'll get it awesome. before it becomes available. Yeah, definitely oh, check, check me out. out on, Rick, uh, yeah, Rick, on, is, Rick is good people. Yep, he sure is. And uh, check me out on Twitter at dchadwickauthor. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time right here on the True Blue Riffcast. Rock till you die.